The Fisher House is located in a quiet residential area about 30 kilometers north of central Philadelphia. The view from the road that runs along the southwest side about 24 meters away shows, through the tall trees that have grown here for about a century, two large wooden cubes set close together and another smaller cube set slightly apart from them. No windows are visible, but long, well-defined slits carve deep shadows in the sides of the cubes. Although the foundation is of stone, no stonework is visible from the road, accentuating the pure cubic forms, the walls of which are made of a single material, cypress wood. The property covers an area of approximately two acres, and its long, narrow, rectangular shape runs in a northeast-southwest direction. The southwest side is bounded by the road, while the northeast side slopes gently downwards to a stream and the woods stretching behind it. The Fishers commissioned Kahn to design their house in August 1960, but it was many years before he came up with the final proposal. In the end, it took four years to design. Construction commenced in October 1964, but was not completed until three years later, in June 1967. This was an extremely busy period in Kahn's life. Major projects he was involved in during the first half of the 1960s include the Salk Institute, the Breen Moore College Dormitory, the Fort Wayne Fine Arts Center, the Indian Institute of Management in Ahmedabad, and the Capitol Complex in Dhaka. His work on the Fisher House was going on at the same time as these projects. Khan has presented eight other proposals before he finally submitted one consisting of two cubes arranged in a 45-degree angle sometime in 1963. The design issue in which Khan was immersed at this time was how to associate and connect spaces that are by nature diverse. He described his approach up to this point in these words. I always start with squares no matter what the problem is, and his spatial composition consisted of arranging square units side by side. In the 1960s, however, Kant's design approach underwent a clear change. He had begun to feel the limitations of this style of composition and was seeking to free himself from the restrictions of the square. He discovered, instead, the vitality of the diagonal, that is, diagonal arrangement, diagonal perspective, and the depth it generates. As Kahn said, if you have a square in which everything is normally answerable to a square, you find two sides are oriented improperly. By taking the diagonal, you form odd conditions, but you do answer. You can conquer the geometry if you want to, and you must relentlessly look at orientation as something you give to people, because it is desperately needed. Kant's experimentation with diagonal planning began with the design of the Breen Morn College Dormitory 1960-1965, which was commissioned around the same time as the Fisher House. Kahn turned three squares, placing them at 45-degree angle, to create a concatenated diamond plan. In November 1962, he went to India to work on the Indian Institute of Management and began studying how to associate and connect the school buildings, dormitories and various other components. Two months later, during a visit to Dhaka for the Capital Complex project, he began planning the arrangement of the House of Parliament and the mosque, the courthouse and the president's residence. Khan took the geometrical plan of diagonally placed squares adopted for the Breen Moon dormitory design and further diversified and developed it into a freer form in large-scale projects such as Amenabad and Dhaka, connecting spaces and buildings diagonally. This diagonal arrangement was closely related to climatic conditions in the two locations. 
measures to reduce glare and maximize ventilation are important design issues in these cities. The system of diagonal arrangements successfully exposed each building and individual room to the breeze from the lakes. Although Khan spent more than 10 years designing the Amenabad and Dhaka projects, it was during the year of 1963 that he elaborated on the basic programming of these projects. It was in this same year that the Fisher House plan, a diagonal arrangement of two cubes, was completed. The concept developed in the Amenabad and Dhaka projects was strongly reflected in the design of this small residence. In the former, diagonality was closely related to wind, whereas in the latter, it created a view capturing the beautiful scenery of the stream to the northeast and the woods spreading out behind it. The basic design premise for this property was to liberate the house to this vista, while at the same time shutting out the view to the south and west on the opposite side, which faces the road. By angling the two cubes, the walls are made to face in different directions, giving each side a different view and a different quality of light. Compared to a composition of cubes arranged side by side, the density of the space is greatly enhanced. As the diagonal perspective is maintained throughout, the space seems to have much more depth than it actually has, and it also makes it possible to obtain the quality of light most suited to each room. As the sleeping cube on the south side is angled to the east, the bedrooms face the woods on the east and southeast and are filled with the morning light. In contrast, the large windows of the living room and dining rooms in the living cube, located on the northeast side, open onto the stream and on the woods and are exposed all day long to a constant tranquil light from the north. Windows on the east and west side of the living room let in additional light in the morning and evening. The bright morning light shines through the large glass window on the east beside the window seat and illuminates the fireplace. The west windows facing the road, on the other hand, are placed in the V-shaped corner where the two cubes intersect, allowing the red-tinged westerly sun to spread across the floor and lap against the fireplace, stretching all the way to the bench. The openings on both east and west sides, which were made possible by angling the cubes 45 degrees, fill the living room with richly varied light that changes with the passing hours and the shifting seasons. It is possible to trace Kant's diagonal orientation back to works designed in the latter half of the 1940s. In the Fisher House, the diagonal fireplace was revived 15 years after the general house, but it is placed at a 20-degree angle within the spatial composition of two cubes juxtaposed at 45-degree angles, creating a double diagonal effect. The entrance door and hall are located within the sleeping cube and a glass opening is positioned in such a way that when the door is opened the line of vision penetrates straight through the woods on the northeast side. A few steps into the hall, the living room with a two-floor high ceiling comes into view diagonally to the left. This point is the intersection of the sleeping and living cubes, where diagonal forces fuse together. From this spot in the entrance hall, the living room, the fireplace and the dining room deeper within are all visible from a diagonal perspective and the line of vision extends beyond to the outside scenery, creating a profound spatial depth. The bench, as part of the large window in the living room, forms the nucleus of the Fisher House and represents the crystallization and determined expression of Kant's idea of a house within a house. When Kant installed benches or built-in chairs, his intention was to make one more space. 
The bench is designed as indivisible from surrounding elements such as windows and window sill, which makes light an essential element. To Khan, the bench was not merely a place to sit down, it had to be enveloped in light and imbued with the aura of space. Responding to the bench is the fireplace, a semi-cylinder of ashlar masonry in random range, its archaic presence reminiscent of columns in an ancient ruin, emits a powerful centripetal force. Of the fireplace, Khan says, I feel it represents the presence of a man, and therefore is of home. To Khan, the word house did not mean a building designed for a specific person, but rather the abstract concept of space good to live in, and it conveyed the image of the primal house in which the spirit of man resides. More than any other work, the fireplace of the Fisher House strongly and clearly expresses the primal concept of house that Khan was seeking.